Hello everyone. Uh, kind of a cool topic today. It's uh, something in mathematics that does a good job of explaining why the world around us looks the way it does and why it acts the way it does. And it's all based on something kind of simple. So uh, let's dig into it. It's called scaling, geometric scaling. And for Davenport students, this is section 9.4 of the textbook. So um, if I were in class, and when I am in class, I'm going to be bringing a great big bag of little one by one by one wooden blocks, and we can actually build these things. But uh, for now, I'm just going to have to have you use your imagination. So you've got these little blocks here. And uh, so um, if you start putting them in a line, if you have a, only one block there, then the length of the line is one. And uh, if you make a square with just one block, then it's going to be one by one by one, or one by one. So that's going to have an area of one. The volume of this is going to be one by one by one, which is one. And then the ratio of the area divided by the by the volume is one over one, which is again one. Okay, a whole bunch of ones. Okay, things become a little more interesting when we go to two. So now we take two of these things and we put them next to each other. Okay, not a very good drawer as you can tell and so the length of the line would be two you got two in there if you were to um, see if I can yeah just just put four of them next to each other two by two the area would be two by two would be four so the area would be four which notice is two squared if you were to make a cube of these things Again, not very good. Oh, God, I've lost all my... There you go. Not too bad. Uh, it's going to be 2 by 2 by 2. So the volume is going to be 2 times 2 times 2 is going to be 8. And the ratio of the area divided by the volume is going to be 4 over 8, which is going to be 1 half. Agreed? Okay, let's go to 3. So now you put 3 of them in a row. I can still draw three like that and if you make a square you're gonna have three by three which is uh, nine which is three squared if you make a cube like that it's going to be 3 by 3 by 3, so it's going to be 27, so that's going to be, this notice is 2 cubed is 8, this is going to be 3 cubed, which is 27, and the, oh, and the ratio of the uh, volume, I'm sorry, of the area divided by the volume is going to be 9 over 27, which is 1 third. Okay, let's keep going. 4, now you've got 4. Might as well do each one, let you have a little time to kind of let the idea sink in. One, two, three, four. Uh, make a square out of it. And you've got four by four. Four squared is 16. Make a cube out of it. And you've got four by four by four, which is a big old cube with uh, what? Four cubed is 64. And so you get one fourth. Okay, so before we go farther, start noticing a, a uh, pattern here, okay? As the number grows, the area grows faster, grows faster than the length. And the volume grows faster than the area. And it's the area and the volume that we're especially interested in. So notice that the ratio of the area divided by the volume keeps getting smaller. It keeps decreasing. That, that ratio decreases as we go. Can you see what's going to happen with 5? Maybe I don't have to do any more pictures. This is going to be 5 squared, which is going to be 25. This is going to be 5 cubed, which is 125. And then the ratio is going to be... Uh, 25 over 125, which is one fifth. Uh, same thing with six. 
you're going to get 6 squared, which is 36, 6 cubed, which is, I think, 216, and the ratio of area over volume is, uh, what, 1 sixth? And finally, mathematicians like to generalize it. If you go out to just something with, with n number n, then the length is going to be n, and the area is going to be n squared, and the volume is going to be n times n by n, which is n cubed, and the ratio of n squared divided by n cubed, n squared over n cubed is what? n times n over n times n times n. Two of those cancel out, and you're left with 1 over n. Okay? So, that's, that's just true. That's the way things happen. As things grow in size, and, and I'm, we're dealing with something very simple, a, a, a cube and a square, but the same thing holds in general. If you have a circle, the length of a circle is 2 pi r. The area of a, of a, um, of a sphere, the, the surface area of a sphere, is pi r squared. Okay, oops, I'm 4 pi r squared, rather. Okay, so, so the length around this length is 2 pi r. That's your circumference. Okay, the area, the surface area of a sphere is uh, pi r squared, and the volume of a sphere, the volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So notice that whether you have a circle or a square or a cube or whatever, you have the same pattern, that the area grows with the square and the volume grows with the cube of the, of the, of the distance, okay? So that's, that holds no matter what, okay? So, um, so that's kind of key. I'm going to make that point in my notes here because I hadn't written that down. Circle, sphere, 4 pi r squared, 4 thirds pi r cubed, and so on. Okay. So, um, why is this important? Why is this important? What does this have to do with these two questions I have up here at the top? Why do elephants have big ears and why do cells divide? And these are just a couple examples. There are all sorts of things in the world that, that this has a lot to do, as I say, with why, why they look the way they do. So, here's the answer. Okay, I've written it down. Mammals. Mammals are warm-blooded. Okay, and so each cell, each cell in the body of a, of a mammal uh, burns fuel. Fuel. And generates heat. Okay, each, each cell, that's where your, your body, you eat food, it goes down into your digestive system, it goes into your small intestine, it gets absorbed through the little villi, in fact we're going to talk about those a little bit later, the little villi of your small intestine, these little things and, and the, the, the uh, molecules of, of, uh, of food go in there, and once they're in there, then they get absorbed into the bl bloodstream, and the bloodstream takes them to a cell. There's a cell, and then um, uh, we're going to talk about cells here in a minute too. But the point is they go into the cell, and once they're in the cell, then the mitochondria of the cell is the thing that actually helps the cell burn it. So that's where they're actually they're burning it. That's where they're oxidizing and generating heat. And that's what you add all those together, and you warm up your body. Okay? So that's, that's what happens. And for mammals... We rely on the fact that it's called homeostasis, that we, we, our body uh, finds just the proper temperature for humans, somewhere around 98 degrees, maybe a little bit less. Uh, they've discovered it's actually a little bit less than 98.6 now. And uh, that's kind of where we, we tend to thrive, okay? So that's because our, our cells are each burning, burning fuel. So, that all, so each one of those things burn, burns and generates heat. So, what does that have to do with things? Well, here's what we can conclude from that. 
the amount of heat generated amount of heat generated is uh, proportional to the volume of the animal. Okay? Because the whole animal is, is built up of cells except for, you know, little cavities that it has like inside your stomach. But otherwise, all your muscles, all your organs, all that stuff, that's all cells, your skin. And so the amount of heat that's generated by your body is proportional to the volume. As the volume increases by double, uh, the, the amount of heat is going to uh, generate it, is going to increase, uh, it's going to double, okay? Because each one of these little cells just generates its own little bit of heat. Okay, so that's key, okay? Now you add that to this. The amount of heat that's dissipated, that means thrown off into the atmosphere, is proportional to the surface area. Okay, because you've got this animal, there's a very simple animal, inside it's generating all this heat, and where does this heat go? It goes out through the surface of the animal out into the atmosphere, okay? Um, and so the amount that you can get rid of depends on how much surface area you have because it just kind of comes out through your pores and through sweating and just, just radiating, radiating heat. So the amount that you generate is proportional to the volume. The amount that you get rid of is proportional to your surface area. Okay, why is this important? Okay, here's what I have down for three. For a large... For a large mammal, such as an elephant, um, there is not, uh, since area to volume is small, why is that small? Because as you get bigger and bigger and bigger, the ratio of area to volume decreases. So this ratio is small, so not enough surface area to uh, dissipate all the heat, all the heat energy, okay? So for uh, something the size of a mouse, it's fine. For something the size of a human, it's fine. But, but once you get up to the size of an elephant, everything has grown so big that the volume has grown a lot bigger than the surface area, just like a square or a, or a, or a sphere. And because of that, the, the ratio, this ratio keeps getting smaller. And so you, you, you have a lot of volume, but you don't have enough surface area. See here, the, the ratio is, is small, so you don't have enough surface area. And so what, is the, what, is the, uh, what does the elephant have to do? It doesn't, it can't get rid of all the heat, and it, that's dangerous for it. It needs to, and so it needs to generate a whole lot of more surface area. So the elephant generates, or let's say uh, designs or builds, or grows, let's just say grows, more big, flappy, thin, surface area, okay? It wants a whole lot of surface area without much volume. And that's why it has those big ears, right? Those big ears have a lot of surface area. In other words, the big ears. So the big ears have lots of area, lots of area, very little volumes, small volume. And so it's like a radiator, like a radiator of a car. Have you ever seen a radiator of a car? It's just it's just a whole bunch of uh, things that uh, let let off the um, let off the, the the heat of the engine. Okay. So that's the idea. There there you go. So that's why uh, that's why uh, 
elephants have big ears. Let me say it one more time, okay? The amount of heat that, that any warm-blooded animal generates is proportional to the volume. The more volume you have, the more heat you, you have because the volume is just generated, or the, the heat's generated from every cell, okay? And the amount that you can get rid of is proportional to the surface area because it just radiates out through the surface. So that's well and good, but as the thing grows, what happens? As the thing grows, the volume grows more than the surface area, and so the ratio gets small. So the ratio gets small. Once this gets too small, then the animal can no longer have enough area to get rid of all the, all the heat. Okay? So, uh, and so what does it do? It compensates for it by growing something that has a whole lot of extra surface area, but very little volume. That is big, floppy, floppy ears. Okay, and so that's why elephants have big ears. Okay, isn't that cool? It's all mathematical. Okay, let's do the, other, the next one. See, so once if you can almost anticipate what the argument's going to be. Okay, why do cells divide? Why do we divide? Well, here you have a cell, okay? And as I just said, that cell, um, let's, let's go like this. The, the amount of food and oxygen the cell needs is proportional to the volume, right? Everything inside that cell is, is living matter. It's a whole bunch of, of uh, stuff in there that's, that's all living. And uh, so all that stuff needs to be nourished with food and it all needs to be nourished with oxygen. It needs both of those things. So the, the bigger the cell, the more stuff that's in the cell. What did I say? The mitochondria is the thing that burns all that stuff. The, the, the more stuff that's in there, the, um, the more stuff it needs. So uh, just like if you have a bigger house with more people in the house, you're going to need more oxygen and more food in the house. Okay? If, if they're filled from the, from the basement to the rafters, the more people you have in there, the, the more food and oxygen you're going to have to let in. Okay? So the amount of food and oxygen that the cell needs is going to be proportional to the volume. Okay? That's all good. Now, how does a cell get that food and oxygen? Do you remember the word? The amount of food and oxygen the cell gets is proportional to the surface area. Why is that? It's because the cell gets all that food and oxygen not by opening a door and just saying, hey, uh, please uh, shove it in at a much faster rate because uh, I'm growing. Instead, it's a very passive system where this uh, food and oxygen is on the outside of the cell and there's more of it on the outside than on the inside and so it just kind of slowly makes its way across that cell membrane through a process called osmosis. If you have more on one side than the other, it just kind of dissipates through the surface. And so the amount that uh, it gets is proportional to the surface. The, the bigger the surface you have, the more stuff is going to be able to, to get inside. Just like if you have a, a, a room with a, a, a bad floor and you've got holes in the floor, the, the more holes you have in the floor, the bigger the floor, the more water you're going to get up that comes up into the room. Okay, so the amount of food and oxygen that it gets is proportional to the surface area. And now, the same thing as before, as the cell grows, the volume grows faster than the surface area. So, at some point, The cell cannot get enough 
food, and oxygen. Okay, it just can't, you just can't get enough. Okay, make sure that I'm still going here. Okay, very good. Okay, so uh, so see the, see the problem? So the amount of food that it needs is proportional to the volume. The amount that it can get through osmosis is proportional to the surface area because the more surface area you have, the more food and oxygen are going to be able to just, just soak into it. And so as it grows, which one grows more? This, the volume grows more. At some point, the ratio gets so small, the area to volume ratio gets so small that it, it doesn't have enough to live. And so what does it do? So cell divides to, let's say, to reestablish the balance, the balance or the ratio. Okay, once it divides, now you've got a whole lot more surface area for your volume. Okay, so that's why you don't have big cells this size, this size in your body, okay? They're all fairly small. It's all dictated by, by this, okay? So there's all sorts of things like this, okay? Um, um, yeah, um, the, the, the fact that, that, a, that animals were quite a bit bigger back in prehistoric times all kind of dealt with this kind of stuff. The fact that... Um, Trees can only get so large because their volume grows more than their than the base. Okay, if you have a tree like this, then then the the the, the area of the base supports this volume. If you have a tree that's proportional in size like this instead, now now even though it's proportional in size, basically each little bit here has to support this high of a column. And so when they do the studies, it turns out that the maximum limit for trees is somewhere around 300 feet. And that's exactly the size of your redwood trees and your sequoia trees. They, they basically hit the upper limit of what trees can, can be just based on the fact that, that the cells are going to start getting smashed under the pressure of everything above them. Same thing for, uh, for mountains, okay? Mountains, say, like this, the amount of pressure on the bottom granite of a mountain all depends on how high the mountain is. So if you have a mountain like this, no problem. If you have a mountain like this, now this little bit right here has to basically have the pressure of all that stuff above it. And so when you see once at what point granite would just get crushed under the pressure, it turns out that it, it's around uh, six miles high, something like that. And it turns out that's just about the height of Mount Everest. So it's kind of neat to see, uh, if you look at brontosauruses and things like that, there's your brontosaurus, I guess they have a longer neck than that. Obviously that's a brontosaurus, and, um, and the, the, the largest size that a, a land animal can be before it, it, it can't support itself is about the size that a brontosaurus is. So uh, nature kind of has a way of filling in the space, of doing as much as it can uh, within its own limits, okay? It, it basically pushes out to do as much as it can, as big as it can, as big as trees, as high as mountains, big animals, things like that. Okay, so all kind of cool, all neat stuff. You understand why the world looks the way it does. All from mathematics. Very good.